decided to have another look at this uh, HP this morning. See if I can get any further with the diagnosing the problems that it has. Um, and this is also an interesting video to show the difference between an analog scope and a digital scope. Analog scopes are great actually in the workshop, especially for sort of radio equipment and stuff, because it gives you a nice sort of clean um, image and it gives you a live a better a better image for sort of analog signals really. Um, and that's why I bought this Tektronix scope because it's and it also generates a lot less RFI, um, which I find is a bit of a problem with my medium wave radios. You're trying to do an alignment, the scope's interfering. If you've got a digital scope, it's interfering with the uh, the, uh, the the whole setup procedure because of its microprocessors and things like that inside. Um, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm running through this uh, phase detector board, which is I'm pretty sure uh, the problem with this unit, the, uh, the Hewlett Packard. I'm sure that that's, that's the only problem it has. It probably, if I replace the phase board, it would work. Um, so what I'm doing is I've been through it a couple of times and I ascertained the first time that the waveform here, I don't know if you can see it, it's quite a complicated waveform and this is the phased, uh, the detection cycle um, and sort of where it does the, its measurements. Now I'm looking at that on the scope now and it's showing it's, um, I don't know if you can see this, but this is the 0 volt line here and it goes it doesn't show you the times, but it does show you it goes it goes ne one volt negative for, uh, with about a 50-50 duty cycle. Then it goes back one volt positive, and it's one volt positive. Then it goes to naught volts again, and there's quite a complicated sort of glitches and things here. Now this is what I'm looking at on the scope, um, and whatever you do, I don't know if you can see that, but there is there is the the information is not well, it's not clear because the sweeps because we're running at a low frequency. There's no persistence on the scope, so you you have to sort of stare at it and try and imagine what the waveform looks like. But I don't know if you can see this, and it's very difficult with the camera because the video camera's obviously got 25 frames per second. But there's a waveform hit, a, a sort of glitch here, moving up and down. I can't see what that's what that's doing. Now, whatever you do to the scope, you can't really resolve all the detail. You can sort of speed the time base up, but then you get this sort of larger sweep here. Um, you can shift the position and look around, but and also even with adjustments like hold off, which delay the, the start of the uh, time base, you can't you can't see the full waveform altogether, and that's the big letdown with an analog scope. Um, what they used to use in the olden days, they used to use a scope with a, a high persistent screen, so basically the phosphor fades very slowly, and you've got a, a nice persistent trace. So you do a scan, and it would show up on the um, show up on the display and I think there were special cathode ray tubes that you could actually keep the gun um, retracing backwards and forwards to give you the display but as you can see with this scope whatever I do wherever I trigger on the on the level this, I'm on normal mode for triggering at the moment so I'm triggering up and down the waveform from 0 volts and that's going this is going below 0 volts and, and then I can trigger on the negative slope and even that it makes it a little bit easier. That's probably actually made it clearer like that. I'm triggering on the negative slope here, but I can still see this line moving up and down. I can't work out what that is. It doesn't look right to me. Um, so we need to uh, look at this in a bit more detail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ditch the analog scope at the moment and go back to my old um, Hewlett Packard. This won't take a second to swap them over. Because um, every now and then, when it's something like this, a bit more complicated waveform, I'm not just using sort of sine, sine waves and things like that, I'm using more complicated switching waveforms, I need to be able to see what's going on. So you'll see the difference now when I connect the, uh, the Hewlett Packard back up. Because this is a digital storage scope, it means that when I'm running in a slow trace, you'll be able to see the waveform because it's digitally stored in memory. So that's our initial trace. Let's turn off the um, slow the time base down. Straight away, you can see. Let's turn off the grids uh, display. Let's turn the grid off, and the vectors are off. 
no, sorry, not the vectors. Or cursors, clear the cursors. There we go. There's the waveform. You see how much clearer that is because the scope's it's doing the same thing, but the, the memory of the scope is remembering where the trace has gone. So even now I'm running the same time base, I've got a much more detailed look at what the waveform's doing, and the triggering is much easier to control. Now this, that dot that I was seeing moving up the line is this line here. And you can see that tracing up the waveform. Now I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure it's actually a problem. It probably isn't. But it's, um, looking at the waveform, it's, it is actually now very similar to what I got. I've got a 1 volt. Let's put our disc grid back on. Um, display grid. So we're 500 millivolts per division. So it's going... There's your 0 volt line. It does show it goes slightly beyond, above that, and it goes one volt negative, and it goes one, and it goes back to 0 volts and past 0 volts to pl plus one volt and back to 0 volt again. So that does actually look like that's working correctly, um, but obviously it was very difficult to see on the scope. Initially on the analog scope, it it didn't look like it was working correctly, but um, that seems to be working fine. And if I increase to reduce that to 120 hertz so that's a much slower sample rate then you just have to get the trigger level correct again slow the time base down and then you've got the waveform back again and that's really the only time in this particular sort of environment where I'd ever use a uh, an analog uh, a digital scope for something a bit more complicated like this the main problem as I say is the noise from the uh, the process and things and I know people who do use this, uh, these uh, scopes, like uh, Bob Anderson from the States uses one of these all the time on his radios and doesn't seem to have any problem with the noise, but I certainly suffer from lots of uh, noise from the processor when it's running, and uh, as I say, it's a bit of a problem. So, yeah, that's the only time I'd ever use a, a, a digital scope, and uh, thanks for watching.